Well, it's constant. You know, you've got 79 animals on 77 acres. You've got, you know, a dozen buildings and outbuildings that are, you know, this is an old colony farm. There's there's a lot of years here, so keeping it all going, it's a it's a pretty expensive proposition to do what we're doing and you're just running the business of the farm is way more than a full-time job. My name is Mark Austin and I'm the executive director of the Muskox Farm here in Palmer, Alaska. Pretty spontaneously picked out a name on a map and ended up in Cordova and kind of doing the Great White North Big Alaska experience and from that moment I, I knew that I'd found my way home. My wife and I sold our business in Palmer in 2003 and we spent the next five years um, living aboard and sailing around the Pacific. We sold the boat in Australia and we briefly moved to New Mexico. At the same time I was, I was coming up to Alaska over and over and over during that time. I think I came up here 18 times in three years and I was ready to come back. My wife and I had a, a little girl and the idea of her growing up on a muskox farm and, and trying to do what you know, I could do to get this thing back in track was um, it was really interesting, so shut down a life in New Mexico, packed everything back up in the truck and drove it back up the road and got to the farm in June of 2010. We are a domestication project. We've been, for the last nearly 60 years, we've been in the process of trying to discover if, in fact, we can domesticate a muskox. And, um, and we've been we've been heading down that road, so I think we're we're on a good tack. It's going to take an awful long time to actually achieve that, and no one's domesticated a large animal in many many thousands of years, so it was a huge question of whether or not it would even be possible. But as far as I know, we are the only project that is actively domesticating muskox to be used in an agricultural manner. Well, our founder was looking at the way life was changing in rural Alaska in the 50s, and suddenly there was things that people were purchasing like fuel or snow machines to to go hunt or rifles and to do so you needed to somehow inject cash into that and economy which didn't exist most the best way for most people to make money in rural alaska was to leave rural alaska and that was incredibly disruptive to families and traditions and he hoped very much to find a way that you could have a geographically appropriate animal that would be able to supplement that that lifestyle and allow people to carry on. It's a it's a huge job. It's it's a lot of effort goes into this project and or the herd's just in really in fantastic health right now. It's you know probably 41 2 percent larger than when I arrived. Our kibbe production is up over 65 percent in just three years. So they'll just come in from the crowder. Set the gates so that the, it leaves them in. Bring them into a stall. Follow them in. Grab your Afro pick and start combing away. 42 million knitters in the country. More knitters than golfers. And I'd say for pretty much most of them, this is the acme of fiber. If you're ever going to have something to work with in your life, even if it's just once, everyone wants to. Everyone wants to do something with Kivute. You know, from a just purely economic perspective, supply will never ever meet demand. And there's, it's just such an amazingly unique fiber and it's soft. My concern would be that we are just a roadside attraction, that what we're doing here is, is not something that has a lot of benefit. I, I believe so strongly in the project. I believe that what we're doing has is incredible value. And we entirely and completely are a working farm. And dispelling the myth that we are some sort of a roadside attraction is is a very important goal. It's, you know, I think that regardless of what we do, when people want to stop by and see a muskox, after they visit the farm, they learn about what we're up to and what we're doing here that there's a lot more to it than just a chance to take a picture of a muskox. I hope that they learn that there's a, there's a lot that can be done to help the animals and I think also the people who live in Alaska in the long run with what we're doing here.
just your average ox farmer out there farming ox.